Hi there. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to share with you how to make this beautiful note card gift box perfect to give as a gift for the holidays. Inside the gift box, I have a set of 10 note cards and envelopes with really clean and simple cards. I love this gift box. I've made an A2 version of this before, which I'll also link in the description, but I love this little version. This holds, again, 10 note cards and envelopes. The finished dimensions of the box are three and three quarters by five and one quarter by one inch deep. It's a really great size, and depending on the number of layers you add to the cards on the inside, you may be able to fit a few more than 10, or less than 10 if you've got lots of extra layers or embellishments. We're using products from the Painted Christmas suite of products. I love this suite, perfect classic Christmas. And we're gonna be using the Christmas to Remember stamp set paired with the Seasonal Labels dies. Let me show you those up close. I love this stamp set for some amazing sentiments for the holidays. And then this set of dies is just awesome with all these labels. And then you've got all these images that cut out the images in the Christmas season set. So I highly recommend both bundles. So these are not bundled together, but the Christmas to Remember bundle comes with the Christmas pine cone dies and the Christmas season stamp set comes with the seasonal labels dies. Lots of choices. This is a big mega suite. Then we're using the beautiful painted Christmas designer series paper. I love working with this beautiful classic Christmas paper. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, for the box base, we're using real red cardstock that measures seven and three quarters by nine and one quarter. And we're just gonna score this at one inches and two inches on all four sides. Like so. For the lid, we're starting with a piece of cardstock that measures six and five sixteenths plus a little bit by seven and 13 sixteenths plus a little bit. I know those measurements sound crazy, but it makes this lid fit perfectly over the base. So you want to basically go almost to six and three eighths, but just a hair less than that. And then almost to seven and seven eighths, but just a hair less than that. If you go to seven and seven eighths and six and three eighths, the lid's gonna be just a little bit too big. That would not be a huge deal if you were gonna tie the box with a ribbon or add a belly band. So keep that in mind if you don't wanna do the really detailed measurements. So on this piece, we're then just gonna score this at five eighths of an inch and one and a quarter on all four sides like so next we're going to fold and burnish on all the score lines of both pieces all right let's start with the box base that's the larger piece and i have this in portrait mode i'm going to cut up each of the vertical score lines stopping at the second horizontal score line and I'm just cutting right up the middle of those score lines. All right, so we've done that. We're gonna remove these two squares in the corner and also when I remove them, I'm gonna slightly miter cut here on this side, like so. Then we just wanna remove one square here. We're gonna repeat the same thing over here, remove the two squares and slightly miter cut here. And then remove the one square. Then I like to fold up this big section here and then we can come in and miter cut these tabs. And then I also like to miter cut on these two sections here, like so. I'm gonna rotate at 180, we're gonna repeat the same thing. Now the cutting of our box base is finished. Now moving on to the box lid, we're gonna cut this one in the exact same way as the box base. Starting with the bottom here with this in portrait mode. Again, I'm gonna cut up each of the vertical score lines, stopping at the second horizontal score line. Remove these three squares in the corner, leaving behind a tab. Same thing over here. Then we miter cut in all these sections as the template shows. And then we'll repeat the same thing on the opposite side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that really quickly. And now our box lid is ready. All right, bringing back the box lid and the box base, the next thing we're gonna do is take tear and tape, and I'm gonna run that right up along the edge of all four sides of both of these pieces. 
Like so, we're just going to run that along the top edge of all of these outside pieces. All right, we've done all of that, and I recommend just burnishing or pressing on all these tear and tape backings. Now before we start to put these together, we're gonna to add some paper to the lid of our box. Now remember the lid is the smaller one of these pieces. And I've got three pieces of paper that we're gonna to adhere together. Basic white measures three and a half by five. Shaded spruce measures three and three eighths by four and seven eighths. And the painted Christmas piece is three and a quarter by four and three quarters, which I recommend being in portrait if you have a directional pattern. I'm gonna glue these three layers together and then glue it to the lid of the box. There we go, and I love that pop of basic white behind those layers. Now our pieces are ready to put together. Let's start with a box base. Using my Take Your Pick tool, I'm just going to remove the backing of the tear and tape. It's much easier to do that part now than after we've glued the tabs in. Then using my liquid glue, I'm going to start one tab at a time. I'll put liquid glue on the tab. And then we're going to line up this score line with this cut edge to form our first box corner. Liquid glue is really great here because we can slide things right into place and get that squared up with a nice corner finish. You are probably going to stick to your tear and tape a little bit, but not too bad. Then just work your way around to the remaining three tabs. All right, now that those tabs are glued down, I like to fold over the longer sides first because they don't have any tabs to fold over. And we're just going to fold those in and press, and that tear and tape will adhere that down. And then these sides, they'll just go over those tabs. They'll fight you just a little bit, but not too bad. Then I like to come in with the bone folder and reinforce all of those sides. And that's the box base for you. And I love how sturdy it is with that double reinforced edge. We're gonna repeat the exact same steps with the lid. And there we have a beautiful lid with that reinforced edge that should fit perfectly over the box base with a nice fit. Now that's not going to fall out, but it's got a perfect fit. Now to decorate the box, I have done this ahead of time to save time. I heat embossed in white a sentiment from the Christmas to Remember stamp set and die cut that from the seasonal labels dies. And then I die cut a piece using the seasonal labels dies out of real red. So shaded spruce and real red. I'm just gonna layer these two pieces. So put a little bit of glue in the center of that and then layer that right over the real red piece. And I'm gonna use five dimensionals on the back. I'm gonna pop that up on the top of our box. I'm gonna come down a little bit from center. And then I'm gonna take some linen thread. I'm just gonna double this up, I don't know, about eight inches or so doubled up. So then you end up having two pieces of linen thread so I can have a double loop bow here. So I'm just gonna do a quick bunny ears bow. I just trimmed off the ends, but that gives you a really nice bow there. And I'm just gonna pop that on a glue dot, kind of pinch the glue dot behind the knot. And then I'm going to add that to the bottom here. Then to finish that off, I'm just going to add a rhinestone jewel for that beautiful gift box. Now I want to show you really quickly how I made the card to go in it. And all you need is one of our note cards. The note cards come in a pack of 20 note cards and envelopes. The note cards are already cut and scored for you. You just have to fold and burnish them. And then I've grabbed a three inch by three inch piece of the painted Christmas designer series paper. Let me show you how we're gonna cut this. Bringing in the paper trimmer, and if you've got a directional pattern, you want it to be facing top to bottom. I'm gonna open up the cutting track here, and I'm gonna turn and twist this counterclockwise. We want the bottom left corner to twist to the one inch marker on the right side of the cutting groove, and the top right corner to line up with the one inch marker on the left side of the cutting groove. So we've got it this way, and then I'm gonna twist it counterclockwise. So I'm gonna line up this bottom corner here at the one inch mark, which happens to be the fourth line to the right. And I like to press my finger there and then I can pivot this. And we're gonna line up this top corner at the one inch mark to the left of the cutting groove. Then I can just close the cutting guide and cut. And you've got this perfectly angled piece of paper. Now, whenever you're, I'm making a set of cards, I definitely wanna have my Stamparatus set up. So I have lined up the sentiment on an angle. I really just dry fit the card and place down the designer series paper first. 
and then lined up the stamp where I wanted it, picked it up with the stamparatus, and then if I had to tweak it a little bit, I did that before finalizing its position. I actually like to open the note card and place it in the stamparatus and then just add the magnet. I'm gonna ink this up with shaded spruce ink. And then this stamp is set up on my Stamparatus to stamp a whole bunch of these note cards, perfect for gifts for the holidays. All right, so then the last thing we'll do is adhere that designer series paper. And you're gonna have about a quarter of an inch of the note card on the two sides and the top when you line this up. And the same with the bottom piece. Now you've got a quick, easy, and cute note card that you can create a whole set of to put in your gift box. So we've got 10 of our envelopes, and I actually staggered them. So I have five with the flaps on the left and five with the flaps on the right. That's just gonna maximize the space in the box. And 10 matching note cards using the same technique I just shared. So again, I've got five with the spine on the left and five upside down with the spine on the right, and those will stack really nicely. And then we can place those in our gift box for a perfect fit and a perfect gift for the holidays. This box would be so great to put in a set of monogrammed note cards, thank you notes, Christmas cards, all kinds of ideas. You can just change up the colors, the sentiment, the designer series papers and have fun with it. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you don't miss my next video. If you're interested in purchasing any of the Stampin' Up! products I used today, they'll be linked in the description. And I'll also include a link to my detailed blog post with all project measurements, details, and pictures of the templates. I'd love to have you come visit me at thepaperpixie.com where I post projects to inspire you. And if you don't want to miss a thing, you can subscribe to receive blog updates via email and you'll receive an email each time I publish a new post. You can shop with me anytime at thepaperpixie.com shop. And if you're interested in a discount on your Stampin' Up! purchases, the Starter Kit is the ultimate bundle, and it's a great way to fulfill your wish list for less. To purchase the Starter Kit, you can visit thepaperpixie.com join, and I'd love to welcome you to my team of Paper Pixies and the Stampin' Up! family. If you don't already have a demonstrator and you'd like complimentary copies of our current catalogs, you can submit a catalog request at thepaperpixie.com slash happymail. And if you give this project a try, I'd love to see what you made, so feel free to share it on social media with the hashtag PaperPixie, and I'll be sure to check it out. Thanks again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. Take care. Bye.